Continuing from the second last video uh, of our Sabine's formula derivation, now let us consider the case 2. Now, in the case 2, energy density has reached its maximum. So, if we, uh, so at that time, t equal to 0, the source has stopped. The source has, source is cut off. So, when the source is cut off, obviously, p is equal to 0. Therefore, if you go to equation 5, it will be e into e to power alpha t 4p by ac e to power alpha t plus k again. So, t equal to 0, e has, so e has reached its maximum. So, e equal to em into 1 e to power alpha t e to power 0 means 1. This becomes 0 k. So, k is equal to em. Therefore, e into e to power alpha t 0 plus e m. So, it is coming from 5. So, e will be equal to e m into e to power minus alpha t. So, you can see that so this is our equation number. So, this is our equation number 6. So, this is our equation number 7. And this represents the decay of energy density. Decay of energy density. And if you want to, so this is clearly an exponentially decay. So, if you want to plot a graph, it will definitely come down like this. And this is with respect to time, energy density. Now, this in this this particular equation seven plays a very important role in deriving the Sabine's formula. This is why, because as we have already discussed that whenever we talk about reverberation time, reverberation time basically considered when the source is cut off okay so when the source is cut off we basically apply we will apply the case to when the energy rest has reached maximum power outcome is zero power, power output is zero so we will basically depend on this decay so during reverberation energy is basically decaying energy density is in decay mode because the source is not on and what is the decay mode e is equal to em into e to power alpha t okay so therefore again we know that reverberation time means reverberation time t equal to capital t say it is in always in seconds t equal to t when energy goes to 1 million time of its initial value so when a source is cut off as we already considered that the energy has reached its maximum em okay so now when it is decaying energy em will definitely reduce but in reverberation time that is under consideration that is our topic of our discussion in reverberation time from initial energy it needs to go back to go down to one millionth of the initial energy so if this is the initial energy this is the sorry this is the final energy so the time taken to reach this situation is called reverberation time okay that means if t equal to capital t e at any instant of time will be 10 to power minus 6 times the em okay that means e by em will be equal to 10 to power minus 6 for reverberation time case therefore going back to equation 7 what we have e is equal to em into e to power minus alpha into t so if i consider e by em 
it will be equal to e to the power minus alpha t but e by e to the power sorry e by em is equal nothing but 10 to the power minus 6 so e to the power minus alpha t now what we will be doing we will be simply to power 6 now i will take log log base e e to power alpha t log base e 10 to power 6 so log base e of e means it will be alpha t log e of e 6 log base e of 10 so this is nothing but 1 so alpha t is equal to 6 log e so in place of alpha sorry t what we will be writing now capital T so t will be 6 log base e of 10 by alpha but alpha if you remember it is 4p by ac so let us go back to find out the value of alpha okay where is our alpha alpha is actually ac by 4v alpha is equal to ac by 4b so i will put the value of alpha there so 6 log ac by 4b again 6 log log base e of 10 is nothing but 2.303 log base e is nothing but ln you can check in your calculators so this ac stays down and 4v goes up capital t is equal to 6 into 2.303 into 4 into v a again c is nothing but this c is nothing but the velocity of sound so here we are using 340 meter per second c we are using as 340 meter per second so if i use that value if you multiply it you will finally attain the value 0 0.165 into v by a or t equal to 0.165 v by summation a s so this is nothing but where v is the volume of the hall or the auditorium a is a total absorption by the auditorium a we have already discussed a a into ds the beginning of derivation this can also be written as this and this formula is uh, applicable only for MKS unit or SI unit. If you for CGS unit, T becomes equal to 0.00165V by summation AS. And for FPS unit, FPS unit, it turns out to be 0.051 b by summation as so whenever you solve numerical problems based on reverberation time you can you should be very much careful about the unit if it is in mks unit or si unit you should definitely choose this formula if it is in CGS unit, you should definitely choose this formula. If it is in FPS unit, you should definitely choose this formula. So here we can see that we have obtained a relation where 
t comes out to be that is reverberation time comes out to be 0.165 v by a s so you can see that whether reverberation time will be high or low that totally depends on the volume and the absorption absorption total absorption is nothing but a s or you can write a into d s also similar thing where it is nothing but a1 s1 a2 s2 a3 s3 so on so that is nothing but the total absorption by various materials inside the hall so it can say this can be because of the floor this can be because of the walls this can be because of the ceiling it, you can add a4 s4 say because of chairs uh, you can add a5 s5 say because of audience because of curtains etc etc so that means this plays a very crucial this formula plays a very crucial role role in architectural acoustics okay because it helps in choosing a very optimum reverberation time if you manage the volume and if you manage the quality of uh, absorbing materials inside the hall you can ma make t high or low and depending upon that you can improve the uh, quality of the uh, sound inside the uh, auditorium or hall so that's all about the derivation of sabine's formula and and, and its importance thank you